welcome to my next video on system verilog for verification so in this video we are going to focus another powerful concept in system verilog that is interfaces so interfaces are important when you are working on complex test benches because it help us manage signal connections efficiently and also help us in reducing the errors so we will explore what interfaces are why why it is needed and how it enhances both readability and reusability in test bench development so let's begin with a problem that interface aim to solve so in verilog the communication between modules is handled by explicitly declaring and connecting signals through module ports so consider this example in this on the left hand side we have a simple 2 bit adder that take, takes two inputs a and b and produces a sum now if you look at test bench on the right hand side you will notice that we need to manually declare each signal a b and sum and then we have to connect each signal between the duty and test bench using dot notation so this method works for small examples but if the number of signals grow then this method becomes very error prone and very hard to maintain so that's exactly where the system verilog interfaces comes in the picture because it uh, interfaces help us in grouping the signals and pass them as a single unit and thus it simplifies both test bench and duty connections so here let's explore the disadvantages of not using interfaces in system verilog firstly like as a design uh, grows complex number of signals become very large then manually connecting all those signals it becomes very tedious and highly error prone next uh, designer must uh, need to remember the names and data types of each signal while manually connecting them between the modules so this may lead to confusion next there is a uh, there is a very high chances of mistakes when you are uh, wiring signals manually like uh, connecting the wrong wrong signal or you may use incorrect direction and uh, making design changes becomes very difficult and time consuming say if you change a signal name or size you must update it in every module where it is declared and uh, sometimes we end up repeating signal declarations across modules which is very redundant and uh, uh, it uh, it is very risky also and risk of mismatch declaration and next uh, even a small change in specs it might require modifications in multiple places and uh, thus it makes the design harder to maintain so clearly there is a need for a better way to group and manage related signals and that's where the system verilog interfaces help us now let's understand what is an interface in system verilog so interface is a bundle of related signals or nets which are grouped together and uh, they are used for communication between duty and test bench so instead of passing multiple signals individually we pass a single interface handle so by passing this single handle it uh, not only simplifies the connectivity but it also improves readability and maintainability so here uh, we have an example of interface we are defining this uh, interface named intef which contains signals a b and sum next we have a module adder and inside this we are now passing the interface ifc and using ifc dot a ifc dot b and ifc dot sum for signal access next we have a test bench module inside this first we are instantiating the interface then we are connecting it with the duty and then driving the values using ifc dot a and ifc dot b so the main the main uh, beauty of the interface is that the adding or removing signals become very easy say you want to add a signal so you just need to uh, update the interface once you don't need to update the port declaration of uh, this design module or the test bench module because 
you are not um, defining the sig uh, each signal manually you are just using the interface so this uh, uh, reusability and this flexibility is one of the main reasons that system verilog interfaces are so powerful this diagram clearly shows the difference between with and without using an interface on the left hand side we are connecting duty and test bench without an interface so here each signal like a b and some they are connected individually between the duty and test bench so this manual connection increases the chance of mistakes and it becomes harder to manage as the number of signals grows so here on the right hand side you can see uh, the connection between duty and test bench is done with the help of interface so all the individual signals are now bundled inside a single interface named intef and this reduces the connection clutter and makes the design more module uh, modular and scalable say uh, if you want to modify or add a signal so you can do it in one place that is in the interface and it would get reflected everywhere so interface brings simplicity clarity and consistency to your system verilog code let's now look at the syntax of an interface in system verilog so it starts with the interface and ends with the end interface keyword it can include a variety of elements and minimum it holds a list of signals like wires logic variables etc just like in a module it can also include functions and task for reusable behavior it can also have procedural blocks like uh, always initial and final blocks and uh, it can have mode pod declarations which define directions of signals next it can have clocking blocks which uh, specifies timing control in test benches it can also have parameters these are constants that configure signal widths types etc so interfaces are synthesizable but uh, certain constructs like initial blocks or delays they may limit synthesis compatibility now let's walk through a simple example to understand how interfaces are used in system verilog so here in this example firstly we are defining an interface called end underscore if which groups three logic signals a b and y next we have a module called end underscore gate and uh, we are passing the interface int f and using int f dot a and int f dot b to access the signals a and b and we are performing an end operation and assigning the result to int f dot y then we are using a program block called test underscore program it applies test vectors by assigning values to int f dot a and int f dot b and then waits 10 time units and then display the value of int f dot y similarly uh, an, an, again after 10 time units we are displaying the value of int f dot y by changing values of a and b finally in the top module we firstly we instantiate the interface using uh, this statement then we connect it to the dut and then we launch the test bench by creating an instance of the program block and then passing the interface so this setup makes the code modular cleaner and easier to manage mainly when designs becomes more complex so uh, the benefits of interface are like we have a single port for multiple signals like we are using a single port instead of uh, using a defining each port individually then we have a improved maintainability means like if any change in sing signal name or type is required then it can be done at only one place and uh, the most important is the same interface can be reused across modules and test benches now let's talk about mode ports a very useful feature in system verilog interfaces so mode port is used to specify the direction of signals declared inside an interface this is important because the same interface might be connected to different modules and each using the signals differently 
So mod port is defined using the keyword mod port, and uh, you can have multiple number of uh, multiple number of mod ports in a single interface. So mod port clearly specifies which signals are input, output, or in outs for each connected module. And uh, yes, they are synthesizable too. So as shown in this syntax box, uh, we can declare a mod port with the mod port keyword and then a mod port name, and then we can list signals with their direction, input, output, or in out. So this way, mod ports help avoid confusion and uh, make your interface usage more structured and more re uh, reusable. Now let's look at an example of using mod ports. So here in this example, on the left hand side, we are defining an interface simple underscore if and with some signals like uh, clock, reset, data, valid and ready. Next, we are defining two mod ports. First is for duty, duty underscore MP and it takes clock, reset, valid and data as input and ready as output. Next mod port is for test bench driver. It takes data and valid as output and clock, reset and ready as input. Now in the middle section, we are defining a duty. So here uh, we see a duty module is connected using this uh, interface dot, this duty underscore MP mod port, this mod port. So here, uh, we, since we are using this mod port, so clock, reset, valid and data would be input and ready would be output. So you can see how we are driving the ready. We are using the valid signal to drive the ready. Next on the right hand side, we are using this test bench and we are using this simple underscore if is the interface name and driver underscore MP is the mode port name. So we are using this mod port for test bench driver. So here data and valid are the outputs and clock reset and ready would be the input. So here you can see how values are driven to data and valid. So uh, you can see this is the power of the mode ports. They make interface more modular, readable and prevent direction mismatches. So one of the key benefits of using mode ports is that they prevent error by restricting access to only allowed signals per module. So for example, in this exam, in this interface, my underscore if we have three signals, clock, reset and data. And we have defined a mode port duty underscore MP. But this mode port only allows access to clock and reset. So if a module is using this mode port and it tries to access data, this data, then it will get a compilation error because this uh, data signal is not included in this mode port. So this is very useful feature in large designs to enforce access boundaries. Uh, next mode port also help in preventing direction misuse. So a module can only write to output or in out signals and can read only from input or in out signals. And that is based on the direction defined in the mode port. So this results in cleaner code, fewer bugs and uh, better tool enforcement of design rules. So here comes the assignment on system Verilog interfaces where we will be designing and verifying a simple UART like transmitter controller using interface and mod port. So here firstly you have to create an interface UART underscore if which will include all these necessary signals and uh, then within this interface define these three mod ports first for the DUT next for the test bench driver and next for the monitor using these uh, input output directions as mentioned here. Next, you have to implement a duty module. This duty module, which you, uh, it will use duty underscore MP as mod port. So here in this, when TX valid is high, it should assign serial out equals to data in and sets TX ready equals to one in the next cycle. Also make sure to reset all the outputs when reset is low. Next, in the test bench, you have to create a program block that uses this mod port driver underscore MP. And then you have to send three different values. Each time when you send the values, set TX valid equals to one and observe these values. 
also you have to add a monitor module which will use this monitor underscore mp as the mode port and then you have to print the values every time tx ready is asserted finally create a top level module to instantiate the interface connect the dut test bench and monitor using their respective mode ports so this assignment will give you hands on experience with interfaces mode and mode ports in system verilog in case of any queries or any questions please write to me on this mentioned email id or connect me via linkedin thank you